Right now, w with the last album, I mean, like, whose decision was it to make sort of like this so many covers? Mine. I make all the decisions. <laughs> <laughs> it's I pretty much mine. Hang on, hang on. Serious, 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 serious. Because in our album, Signing Up, our very first album, right. at the end of it, we've got a continuous groove, which is a real pain in the ass for people who, like, you know, have continuous the groove. Players, right? And what it is, is Ali singing one of the songs that we put on Labour of Love, you see. Right. So even from that early start, we always wanted to do it. Like it was an idea that it should have been yeah. our first well, album. People convinced us not to make our first album an album of covers because, you know, it'd be treated like a right. cabaret band. But why don't you actually ask those questions before you answer them? <laughs> it's always that point. I'd like, to, I'd like to take this point to say that even though the printer really screwed up on the credits, but it should have said dedicated to the people of Australia. Yeah, yeah. On this album. <laughs> so they missed that was that. the theme. We, you know, did like you come to an Aussie album. sort of accent when you're doing this? I mean, when you're telling us. It was dedicated. That's what it is. No, it was dedicated. I'm afraid I can't. So. <laughs> dedicated. No, but I mean, like, um, to go and do covers uh, is a pretty bold move by any group, um, and to make it success is another thing, which it was. Did it surprise mm. you that it was successful? No, as well? no, no. 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 It saved I mean, our the, lives, basically. They are, <laughs> <laughs> they are classic, classic tracks, tracks anyway. No, no, one at a time. That was the whole reason for doing the album. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that when we were kids and listening to reggae, all of those tracks on there were hits in the reggae charts. And right. we were convinced that if only major radio would play those originals, they'd have been hits at the time. Right. So when we did our own versions, we were convinced that it was an album of hit records. But then it's still that taking. That's, the, that's the way it turned out. Excellent. Excellent. It's very good, good this boy, you know. Yeah. 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 But hold on, it's still taking the risk that radio is going to play them. I mean, radio are pretty strange, full stop. That's true, but we've always done very well with airplay. Yeah. You know? And uh, we knew that you have to excuse my cold. Uh, what was I saying? Cold. <laughs> <laughs> we've always done very well with airplay, you know, so we, were, we knew that the tunes were that good that if we did a vers our versions of them, they would get airplay. Right. They only have to get airplay. A record only has to get enough airplay to be a hit if it's a good tune. And the problem with the original reggae versions is that they didn't get the airplay because right. reggae was very much a minority music. Okay, so you made the decision to do that then um, and come up with that idea. So then who came up with the idea of, of making such brilliant film clips? I did. I did, I did. <laughs> Actually, Brian. Brian, Brian, Brian is our <laughs> film person. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, I mean, how did you approach that? I mean, it's considering the video has gone way over the top in a lot of ways. You know? Sure. Well, I mean, like, for say the last three years, we, we didn't really make any videos to go to records. We were we so disappointed with, with, like, the state of the art, you know, it's so predictable and cliche. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> the boys are tired. And so, in the ultimate wisdom, I sat back and I thought, no, we just tried to make something different, you know, like a, like a saga. Right. You know, like we were going to make videos, clips. That's the Australian term, that's clips. <laughs> clips, right? Yeah, clips. We were going to make clips for, for each single from the album anyway. So we, we figured we'd make it so like a, a short saga, you again. know. Mm. And basically, the, the total opposite of everybody else, you know, like rather than sun drenched beaches and Girls with suntans. We had girls with blackheads and, <laughs> you know, and horrible streets and being cold. Right. You know. Now, I mean, it's all very well sort of coming up and when you write your own songs to sort of perhaps come up with some idea or a concept for a storyline for a video clip, right? Um, with this, I mean, using other people's songs and coming up with an idea of a story. Um, who, who then drafted the storyline? Because then it sort of right, followed on again. Right. <laughs> it sort of followed on, didn't it? It became a sort of like a little... Oh, sure. Well, well it, was, it was planned out, you know. We'd, yeah. We'd, I mean, we're actually quite averse to making videos, you know. Right. Well, we'd so made that's why we took, that's we'd why we started to produce them ourselves. Oh, we made about 10, 10 of a terrible. Yeah. And Brian about 12, went, he's all terrible. He says, uh, well, why don't we give Brian a chance to, you know, do a, a good one. And I think he did a bloody good job. So do I. I can tell you. So where did you get the extras <laughs> from on that? I mean, you must have... Everybody's friends. I mean, the whole thing was shut where, where our recording studios in Birmingham. We've got a studio and rehearsal rooms. And all the people in it are friends, people we grew up with. Wow. I mean, there's no professional actors in it at all. Yeah. Except for Benno. Except I mean, for Benno, Benno, which is... For instance, when Red Red Wine sort of was first released and the video, and people saw the video, television tends to be very sensitive about certain areas, about booze and sure. yeah. oh, right. stuff yeah. like that. And Blackheads. Um, sure. <laughs> and it, it, it dealt with that, and yet it was shown literally everywhere. There was no kerfuffle, no nothing. You know? well, oh. Funny enough, in England there was. You know, like true, the yeah. BBC in England did actually ban that video, but 
the, the record went to number one and we were unavailable to do the show and they were literally forced into showing it, you know, but they, they wouldn't have done. Right. All, the, all the, the other sequences from the film were actually banned, you know, they wouldn't right. play it. Yeah, they, well, only, when, they only showed it once and the next, uh, it was number one for three weeks there and they didn't show the video again, even though it was available to them, they, they refused well, to show it. Well, there was a new directive from DBC sent to us, wasn't it? It got ultra-sanitised, everything got ultra-sanitised sure. after the uh, red, red wine video. Because sure. of the smoking and the alcohol. Right. Yeah. And then they banned the, the very next uh, video, which was part of the same film, right. which we'd made as clean as we possibly could because of the hassle that red, red wine had. had. And uh, it was, it was boxing the boxing, the boxing right. sequence, which was the video to Please Don't Make Me Cry. And... Uh, <laughs> They banned that because it was too violent. And that, I mean, we'd been so clean and careful with it.